Hello Earthlings, welcome to this video where we have a look at K-Stars, E-Cars, why not to buy the ZWO ASI Air, and how to remotely control all of your astrophotography gear from the warm of your home. So let's get into it. So what is K-Stars and E-Cars? Well, K-Stars is a full featured, free, open source planetarium software package. Included in it is E-Cars, which is the astrophotography module. E-Cars is able to do just about everything you'll ever likely need to do for imaging including controlling a telescope mount and go to auto guiding using its internal auto guiding or PhD push here dummy automated imaging um, support for just about every camera and DSLR out there a full observatory control opening and closing observatory domes when it rains if you have a rain sensor a plate solving so you can point it at the sky and it'll work out exactly where it's pointing so if there's an error It'll work out the error and it'll go and point where you told it to originally. It can autofocus if you have an autofocus motor based on time, temperature, or when it detects that the focus has shifted. You can tell it to go and take 100 red, 100 blue, 100 green, and all the narrow bands you like, and then go to bed. And Ecos will capture all the images, change the filters, and even autofocus as required. And if it rains, it'll close the dome. So what do you need to run K-Stars? Well, pretty much any computer will do. You don't need a lot of power. Um, even for the plate solving. A Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 is perfect. 4 is a bit better, a bit faster. You can use a laptop or an old PC connected to all of your equipment. Um, Windows, Mac, Linux, doesn't matter. And use it directly if you don't want to be remote. But K-Stars uh, is designed to be able to be used remotely so you can go and sit inside in the warm. A great way to do this is to get a cheap Raspberry Pi or an old computer if you've got one lying around or an old laptop connect all your astrophotography gear to it and control it from another computer or tablet in your car or, or back in the warm and on the sofa you don't need remote desktop software like vnc or team viewer or anything like that you just run k-stars on your main computer inside and connect it to the remote computer outside using ethernet if you can wi-fi if you can't but uh, ethernet is a bit more reliable and faster the images are stored on the remote computer or they can be stored on your local computer inside or both. So how does Ecos talk to everything? Well, Ecos uses a protocol called Indy to talk to everything. Indy is very flexible. It's very easy to add new devices to Indy so manufacturers can support Indy or even you can write the driver yourself. It, it's really quite simple. ASCOM is a similar standard you may have heard of, uh, but it's closed and it only runs on Windows, although there is some talk of bringing it to Linux and Mac. Indy, Ecos and K-Stars are all created by a brilliant dedicated team of engineers and no, I'm not affiliated with them at all, but their work is great and they really put a lot of effort into what they do and they want everyone to be able to get into astrophotography or even just looking at the stars through the planetarium software not just people with deep pockets so what's wrong with the zwo asi air you may have heard of well the asi air series of products they do work well and that's because they use indie and ecos under the hood they do develop new features and they have an app but from what i've gathered they do this illegally they use Indie, they use FFmpeg and other things, um, several open source packages, and they do this illegally. They shouldn't be doing this. So worse, ZWO restricts the ASI Air to only use their hardware. You can't use it with, say, the Nightcrawler Focuser or a Q QHY camera or anything like that. This seriously harms the development of Indian ECOS, which is meant to be open and used by everyone, and indeed it's used by some very large observatories. So ZWO makes a lot of money off the backs of people who've already written all this software so they don't have to do the hard work, which is not good. So what about Stellamate? Well, Stellamate is a Raspberry Pi, and from what I can gather, it's sold by a contributor to the Indie project and is officially endorsed by Indie. Stellamate has an app, you can use it on a tablet or a smartphone in the field, and does what the ASI Air does, and a lot more. Plus, it supports more than just ZWO products, so you can use it with QHY cameras or other focuses. Stellamate is a Raspberry Pi 4, at the moment there was a Raspberry Pi 3 version, and it comes loaded with a Stellamate OS, but you can buy that OS on its own for $49, but there's a free option, and that's Astroberry. So if you want to use a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 to control everything, Astroberry is the free solution. It's a very simple setup and use, and you can connect all of your devices that support Indie, which is just about everything. Astroberry is basically a collection of all the software that you need packaged up, so you just copy it onto a micro SD card with some software such as Belena Etcher, very straightforward. Just pop it in a Raspberry Pi that you can buy off Amazon, and you're off. Later we'll walk through how to set up everything with real hardware. I use Astroberry to remote control my scope, mount, filter wheel, camera, guide scope, and all of that good stuff. So let's get started with K-Stars. 
Okay, so here we are with KSTARS. Uh, once you've downloaded and installed this, which is nice and straightforward, this is what you'll be greeted with, this is the setup screen. So we'll just go through this, click here to download the guide star catalog, uh, which I've already done. You'll want to put in where you live. Closest city to me that's in the list is Portsmouth, but you can put in a lot long and you can download extra data, much, much more uh, star galaxy, data and even curiosity and perseverance data from mars but we won't be needing any of that right now so once we've done there get some nice tips which we probably don't need so this is k stars which is the planetarium software you can get an idea of what will be in your field of view now notice the reticules we have here these are for eyepieces now if we go up to settings field of view symbols go to edit field of view symbols we can say we have a camera, so I'll put in the details for my scope and camera, which is a Explore Scientific David Levy Comet Hunter, which is a 731 focal length, and I've got a 1600mm camera, which is 4656, not that, 4656 by 35, 3520, and the pixels are 3.8 microns which I will put in here. And then we can calculate field of view. And I can say, yep, I'm gonna call it 1600 because that's the camera. Say, yep. And then we go. So this is the computed field of view. There's not a huge amount of detail because I haven't downloaded all of the uh, extra star catalogs that you might like but they're available if you need them. Now, if you wanna have a look for some targets, we can go to pointing, find object, and let's have a look at M31, and you'll see it'll slew over to M31. Now, this is all very well and good as a planetarium software, and it's good for having a look around the night sky, especially with some more data in there. And if we come up to the top here, we can change the coordinate system to equatorial, uh, centered roughly around Polaris, centered on the North Celestial Pole. So with an equatorial mount, this is how you would align your scope pointing to the North Celestial Pole, unless you're on a Dobsonian mount, of course. Now, ECOS, which is the astrophotography part of K-STARS, you can get to with this little dome icon here. I've reset my copy of K-STARS, so it's exactly as you should get it when you download it, and we would like to set it up. Now, how is everything going to be connected? Well, for this demo, we're going to say it's all attached. We're going to use internal indie. That just means that it will be running locally. And yeah, let's call it Demo Astro. Now, if we're going to guide, we could use the internal guider or we could use PhD or Lin guider. I haven't heard of, but the internal guider works great. So we'll create that. Now, this might look a little bit daunting, but it's all nice and straightforward. So mount. Well, we're going to simulate stuff because it's nice and quick and easy. And unfortunately, I've got about a week of clouds ahead of me, according to the forecast. So what about a camera? Well, let's have a CCD simulator and a guide camera. Let's have a guide simulator. What about a focuser? Simulator. Focus simulator selected. And let's have a filter simulator as well. We don't have adaptive optics but they are supported we don't have a dome we don't have a weather station and we don't have anything else so let's click save you'll see that we have a profile called demo astro that we've just created and we can edit it by clicking on the little pencil icon there so we'll start all of this running and we'll click connect and everything has connected of course because it's simulated don't need any of that now these tabs here are how you control and interact with the various parts. Now let's have a look at the camera. So from here we'll select our main CCD. Now for a real camera you can select whether you want the cooler on and off, the desired temperature, and if you tick this box it will enforce the temperature as reached before taking any images. You can select which filters you have and you can name them here. So let's go to a luminance filter. You can select your exposure, how many you want, whether it's a light, a bias, a dark, a flat. You can put in your gain and a delay in between each capture if you want a little bit of settling time. If we close this and let's go back to M31. Now we'll say telescope go to. Now what you should see is the simulator telescope uh, the mount 
will start slewing through the sky and we'll come over to M31. Now it's done that, let's click this button here, which will capture a preview. Let's up our gain a bit. That's better. So now we have a nice exposure of a simulated sky. Now, if we wanted to take a luminance, we just click add, and then we want a red, we'll click add, and then a green, and then a blue, and then you can click run. Uh, yes, we're using the simulator. You see, it'll go and take a photo, and the next one, the next filter, and now we've taken all of our images. Now, if you wanted to change these counts to 100, 1000, 20, whatever you like, it'll go and take that many. Now, let's have a look at the focus module. Now, if you have a focus motor, this is going to be wonderful because you can say you can bin to get a bit more gain if you need to but you probably want the detail for focusing. Uh, let's go to the luminance filter, whack the gain up, and here we go. So we've captured an image. Now, what we want to do to autofocus is you have to pick a star. Let's go with that one. And now we'll just click autofocus and off it will go. Now you see on the graph from the bottom there, the number dots are the each time it's moved or taken a photo and looked at the focus. As you can see, it's making small adjustments based on the, the step size. And it will keep making adjustments until the half width radius of that star is as small as it's going to get. And you see it's coming down and down and now it's starting to go back up a bit. So now it will move the other way. And after doing this, after it's settled, there we go, focus is completed. So that's how simple it is to autofocus in ECOS. I haven't set this up completely correctly, but in here is where, let's put in the true details for my scope. And I'll say, yep, that's, that's my scope. Another wonderful part of ECOS is the plate solver. Plate solving, if you're unaware, came from back in the days of film astrophotography. People would have to take a plate or not film sorry it was a plate a photographic plate and they'd have to work out where is this actually pointing and so they'd have to cross-reference it with a star map and work out where this image really was so the next time they want to go and expose the same target they can make sure that they're lining up exactly it also means you can take a photo anywhere in the sky as long as there's enough stars and it can work out where you are now this is very useful for aligning and calibrating your, your telescope so you know exactly where it's pointing. And this can also be used for polar alignment, which we can cover later. But the way this works is if you click on sync, what it'll do is it will take an image like that and then it will solve it. And one thing to make sure is that you have the index files installed. Now I'm gonna to have to download a couple more because I probably have a wider field of view or a narrow field of view rather. Now I've already downloaded most of these, but it's worth going and downloading, I believe it was 10% uh, to 100% of your field of view of your scope in arc minutes. So once these are downloaded, we should be able to capture and solve. We want to use the built-in method, internal solver and default. Let's just make sure that we have the field of view set up correctly. That's not correct. So we got 731 millimeters. We're 4656 by 3520. And the pixels are 3.8 microns. Okay, that'll set the field of view. Okay, now this isn't a real um, star field, so that's probably why things aren't looking quite correct. I was using this last night and it worked very well. I told it to go and point at Andromeda and it did, and it was off, you know, because of mount error by a very small amount, and it calculated how much it was off by. Now, if you click sync and capture and solve, what it'll do is it'll take an image and it'll go, ah, I'm pointing over there. And it will update its internal coordinates to go, yep, that is where the scope is now pointing to calibrate itself. Now, if you click slew to target, what will happen is if you tell it to go somewhere, take a photo, capture and solve. If you told it to go and point somewhere and there's an error, which can be seen in this graph down here, it will then work out that error and it will go and iteratively, as required, get closer and closer to the target so you are bang on the target and you can adjust these settings here this is how close you want to be before it gives up and this is the time to wait in between slewing and taking an image so to give your scope a little bit of time to settle now also we have in here the guide section if you're familiar with auto guiding or if you've used this before auto guiding is just the process of 
having a little baby telescope on your big telescope and that points at a star while you're imaging because telescope mounts aren't perfect there are errors and over time they can drift so super long exposures you know 5 10 15 minutes that can make your stars trail or turn into a bit of a curvy shape or other bad effects so guiding will use the little scope to close the loop effectively with feedback so it will know if the star has moved ever so slightly. We can use this in the simulator. So let's pick a star, go to guide. Let's see what it does. Now this is using multi-point guiding where it picks multiple points. You can see the errors as it's calibrating. So it's trying to move the simulated mount and see how that affects its guide image. Okay, it's finished calibrating and we are now guiding. Simple, huh? Not bad. And just like with PhD, you'll see over time an error for your right ascension and declination axes on this graph. So you can see once it's settled down a bit, you'll be able to see what kind of errors you're getting. Okay, well, that's all we have time for today, but I'd just like to very quickly show you a couple of shots that I took recently. Well, this one I took last night. This is Andromeda. Unfortunately, the clouds rolled in pretty much immediately after I took this. In fact, they're pretty much uh, rolling in in this image here and here's what i took a while ago the orion nebula of march by the looks of things now these are just black and white single luminance 30 second exposures these are all taken with a raspberry pi running astroberry remotely controlled from inside the house i believe so i can keep them nice and warm now in the next video i will take a raspberry pi i'll set it up with astroberry completely stock out of the box and get everything set up with my real telescope mount camera and all of that good stuff and show you how to get it all working remember guys we are star stuff contemplating star stuff clear skies